we're we live. Have a paper towel. Just because this is we're live. Use that. It's totally clean. Hello, if anyone is here. It's another crazy day in Afton, Minnesota. I um, just got paint on me, so I will be the video. My my okay. videographer, aka the person who's holding my iPhone while I'm speaking right now into okay. the laptop. I'm not actually on we don't okay. need that one on screen yet, okay. Jill. Okay. I'm just uh, talking. It's me and Jill. Let me show you Jill. We're going to turn. Jill. Who just Jill. The paint. There's Jill. Jill, as often happens when we're around wet paint, got her very nice, it almost looks like a cashmere sweater full of, um, full of paint because I was prepping. Hey, everybody, starting to sign on. This is Liz from Liza Jane Designs. Shannon, it's great to have you here. Hi, Sandra. Um, here's what we're going to work on today. It is a, uh, it's a piece of wood that came off something. I've been using it here in the shop as a kind of a sample board where people could try things out before they commit. And what I've done so far is just paint over this guy to give it a fresh coat of white. Um, and we are going to be doing lots of things today. Jill, can I ask you before we even turn to that camera, mm -hmm. I, I poured some water in a couple of buckets upstairs and then I think I left the buckets up there, just little tins mm -hmm. so that I can rinse brushes and so on. Here, um, yeah, or outside of it or in the bathroom. Um, I get tired of hearing myself say this, you guys. Hey, Lori, welcome. Hi, Barb. Um, you wouldn't know it, but I am not a newbie here. I have done this before, and every time I do it, I feel like it is my first time. Uh, they improve StreamYard all the time, which means I have a hard time keeping up with the changes. But here's what we're going to be using today for IOD supplies. I was very inspired by a piece that I found on the Iron Orchid Designs Creative Tribe. Hello, friend. Hi, Linda. So good to have you here. Um, Jane from Funk Funkature posted a piece that she had done using paint inlays over decoupage tissue. Now, we're not going to do that today because we always kind of change it up a bit. What we're going to do today, still not live, is um, use some stamping. So we are going to use the Le Courier. I think, I think it's actually called that. This stamp. We're going to seal that up, and after we do that, we're going to use the rose chintz paint inlay to kind of mimic what um, Jane did with decoupage tissue and decoupage tissue and inlays. I'm going to have to. Good morning, Pamela. Diane Cook from Massachusetts. Linda D'Antonio is also from Massachusetts. Um, and we're having technical difficulties. StreamYard right. improves itself Wi -Fi. all the time. And we're going to use the back camera. I'm sorry, you guys, but bear with us, please. We're going to use the back camera. We're going to almost enter the studio. So happy new year, you guys. This is my first live in 2023. We're gonna add to stream. You're on, Jill. Jill says namaste. Oh boy. Give me a second while I connect this to my earbuds so we lose that echo. 
Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Staying here with me, Pamela says, namaste. Namaste, namaste Pamela, Pamela Tina. We have, we a, have watcher, a watcher, a viewer, from, viewer New from New Zealand. New Zealand. Uh, um, uh, um, let's see, who said they're from Massachusetts? Diane. Diane. Where are you from Where in are you from in Massachusetts, Diane? Diane. I, grew Diane. I grew up in North, North Attleboro, Attleboro, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And I do and I not do know, know why. why this, this phone is, is being this way. way. No, no, we, we have, have no, somehow, somehow it's connected two times. Two, times. two times. We're going to remove one of them. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. boy. <laughs> yeah, we should get help from my um, I think I'm going to have to just go with my uh, laptop again, which is frustrating the heck out of me because I have a camera person here today. Um, do I have my phone speaker on? Thanks, Pamela. I didn't think I did, but let's check that. The microphone is muted. We're going to access the camera, mute the microphone. There's Jill again. <laughs> We're going to, yep, there's Jill. Namaste again. Okay, are you ready to film you? I think we are. So, Jill, we're going to focus you on this. So, here's what we have, you guys. We're going to get started. All good now. Awesome. Um, I'm going to make my face. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're just going to leave it as it is. Jill, let's see if I can do it this way. Picture in picture. I just want this to be small. Am I not getting you? And I'm afraid if I remove Can you guys hear now? Bingo. Pamela says, can't have two speakers going at once. I think we only have one now. Give me a thumbs up or something. There you go. Yes. All right. Here we are. So I said I was inspired by Jane of Funkature. And she had done decoupage and then paint and lay over the top. But we're going to go full on IOD today and do stamping. Then we're going to seal our stamping. And we're going to do paint inlays over that. And if we have time, we're going to throw in some stenciling because here in Afton, Jill and I have recently purchased an Airbnb and we're going to use it as a retreat center. Um, so I'm going to make like a welcome sign to use in our Airbnb. My speaker went really weird. Could you keep No, keep that on, but maybe make sure your hand isn't over it. <laughs> So I just have some black ink. I'm stamping up the La Courier stamp, and I'm just going to put it randomly here and there on this piece. There we go. Do you want to come over here and so people can see the front way of it? So I'm making this look like old newsprint. That is my... Um, intention here. So I'm going to stamp it in different areas. I'm going to hold this up because I don't want to over stamp there. So we have that 
going on. I'm going to re-ink. Now, when we use these stamps, I already um, we went to the single view. Dang. All right. Can you hear me now? All right. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Maybe I should just maybe I should just sign um, use sign language, and, language and not talk. But here we have but here we have this piece. This piece. Can you give a can good, you give a good view that? of that, Jill? It is stamped. It's pretty faint. It is. I'll sh hold it up this way too. Uh -huh. But it looks like newsprint here. Print right? here, right? Newsprint. And because, and because I, I want, want to, to go, go over, over this, I am going to dry it quick. And then, and then I'm, I'm going to seal it. So here we go with the dryer. And now, now we're back to the echo. echo. Can you turn off the can you turn off the oh, there? I mean the mic. It is off. Okay, so are we back to good again? No echo. We have two pictures. You can watch you can watch me and watch my project at the same time. Someday I'll figure out how to make the me picture little. Yes. All right. So if my Massachusetts person besides Linda, I know where you are, Linda, can tell me where you're from, I just would be thrilled. I love to uh, touch base with people from, I still say back home, even though I haven't lived there for quite a long time. Um, I want to put sealer on here. And I know I brought some down from upstairs. Do you see where I put it? We're yeah, not okay, seeing we'll where it yeah. is. So we might have to, you guys, punt. Punt once again to not seal. Jill, talk to people or show them something while I grab a thing of sealer. <laughs> Jill's tired this morning, slow moving. I'm not very entertaining. Can you show them the project? Yep, I Can am. Can you talk to them about it? Can you tell them? We're off to a rough but exciting year. We are. There, we had a lot of ice on the roads this morning. Schools are either late or closed here in Minnesota. And been Wisconsin. Rough, and Wisconsin. It's been a rough um, weather month for us between extreme cold, snowstorms, horrible driving. All those things. But we're not ones to whine. <laughs> we're um, ones to go to Florida, though. So, Kathleen, what we are making is a sign. Yeah, I would like to go to single view, but then you can't hear me. So that's the problem. Could we just focus this down instead of... I, just might I could try to do that. Because Group layout. No, we don't need to. Oh, there. Maybe this will be better. There. That's better. Oh, you guys. So Technology. here we have, we are working on a sign. We are going to be stenciling over paint inlays, which will be applied over stamps. So what we've done so far is paint this scrap board, which I love because it has an interesting shape. Um, and we, I did it in a kind of vintage white and I've stamped black IOD decor ink using the Courier kind of newsprint stamp. I dried it with my um, blow dryer. Let's not get stuff on this pretty coverlet. That's fine, that's fine. So we're gonna seal it and it's not running at all because I did dry it well. So we're just putting some clear sealer on here. I opened up a new one because, you know, I always go through it. So 
we're going to put on the sealer and then we are going to apply a paint. I was thinking a green, much of our Airbnb, and I'm not even positive, you guys, if I introduced myself thoroughly here. I'm Liz with Liza Jane Designs in uh, Afton, Minnesota. My friend and partner in this craziness, Jill, is here with me. Um, if you're in the Twin Cities area or western, far western Wisconsin, I might be your IOD stockist. If I am, I hope you'll come see me. And if I am not, I hope you will find your stockist on the retail locator. Turn in the dryer back on. So we are coming in here. Could you go upstairs and get me a really nice green? That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Green paint. Um, you pick. We're going to use the rose chintz on top of it. So, and we're going to use it at the Airbnb. So, you pick the color, Jill. Jill's going to go get the the green paint we'll be using. So, first coat of on here has been off white paint followed by black IOD ink using the La Pourrière stamp, sealed up with some clear sealer. And I am drying and filming at the same time here. When the glaze goes off the, there. We'll get that good and dry and apply our paint. So I love the IOD. I think of IOD items as tools. They're tools in our creative toolbox. And my favorite projects often combine multiple techniques like this one will with stamping, inlays, stenciling, a little bit of distressing of the paint. Yeah, isn't that funny, Linda, how it doesn't matter. I've lived in Minnesota longer than I lived in Massachusetts because I lived there until, until I was 21 and I'm more, I am more than 42 years old now, so I've definitely lived here more than I have there, but I still think of that as home, and my husband, who grew up in Minnesota, gives me a hard time about that. He says, you'll, you'll never claim this place, and, and I love it here. I especially love it in the St. Croix River Valley, but um, I don't know. Home is where I grew up, right? So this is what we are going to use, you guys. I'm going to open up a brand new rose chintz inlay. Jill's going to be bringing down the paint from upstairs. So let's open this guy up. Jill, if you can't find a good green, I'll take black. Pardon? Oh, there's squeeze bottles against the wall and all those. Um... All right. Okay, so we have paint. Let us choose. I think I'm going to use. Oh, boy. Now we're gone again. Camera. We got kicked out. That's what happens. This is this is a fiasco of a the browser has blocked your microphone and camera. You are in the show, but there's no camera. All right, we're back. So here is the project. We're back. We 
We're going to flip these over because we are very paint neutral here at IOD. And we're going to use this green color. Hello. Hello, Mr. Postmaster. Would you like to be on an, a Facebook Live with us? Oh, no. no. So here in Afton, we are located in a building that has a pub and restaurant and a post office. The best post, the office. Best post office in Minnesota. Yeah. And let's let's introduce Mike to the people. I was say hi. No. No. <laughs> Unless they're He's, Afton residents. He's Some of busy. them may be Afton oh. residents. He's a little busy. He's had to deal with the icy roads. And hi. Drivers up here. You're right here. Oh, hi. This is Mike, who is. Doing that both ways? How is it? How yep, is we have two cameras going on here. It's surprisingly well today. Okay. Yes, I expected okay. a lot more problems than we had. Yeah. All right. So you see, I'm painting over this whole thing we just stamped. And I'm doing this because later. I'm going to distress this back so we see some of that newsprint. But we're also going to top this off with um, the paint inlay. So I'm going kind of rough because I want it to look beat up. It's my favorite look, which is nice because much of what I have, including my own self and my husband, are kind of old and beat up. So good I like that look our cars our cars, cars. my 200,000 plus mile yeah. Volvo that yeah. I wouldn't trade for anything is we're gonna have the transmission fixed on that guy all right so we've got this coat of paint I'm gonna dry it I'm gonna leave it rough America. like that okay. I'm okay with that I like the roughness of it so here we go yep Mike you're right I missed that corner we're gonna do that too there we go We'll dry this guy up. Edie is in Dartmouth, or Dartmouth, Dartmouth Massachusetts. Um, like I said, I grew up in North Attleboro. That's how we said it back in the day. Um, and where I live now here in the St. Croix River Valley, I have to tell you, it reminds me a lot of much of Massachusetts, the greenery. We don't have an ocean, but we have lots of lakes and rivers. So water is very, very prominent in, in our lives here in Minnesota as it is in parts of Massachusetts. So I do miss the ocean, but my brother still lives in Massachusetts in Harwich on Cape Cod. So I get to visit there. And go see Linda at Seaporium in Hyannis. So if you're in Massachusetts, it could be that Linda at Seaporium is your IOD stockist. You're going to get the, the areas of this green paint to light. And it is now... I think we have, oh, with the island, that's a place I totally want to get to. Also, the San Juan Islands there in the Pacific Northwest. I love, I love the Pacific Northwest. I have a sister who lives in Olympia, and I like to visit whenever I can. You know, it's a similar lush, green, watery environment, right? So we've got this green. We're going to go with our paint inlay now. You guys watching, have you used paint inlays before? I have an affinity for this rose chintz. I don't know. I have affinity for a lot of them, but the rose chintz over green and over black and over cream. It's just a beautiful, beautiful look. So I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to trim it up a bit so that I can use all of it across this board. I've got a pair of scissors here and I don't know, it looks like we cut it around here. So I'll have to piece 
and I'm not super critical. It's not super critical to me that every inch is covered because we're going to distress it back and that kind of thing. But I do want the edges and I can cut like right here. I don't like to get too stressed about perfection because we never achieve it. And in my mind, it takes the joy out of creating when I'm too stressed about getting everything just so. So here we go. To use the paint inlays, I, I cut away the edge there that had no paint on it. We are going to put our wet paint back on here. We might even use a tiny bit of water to help spread this a bit. So we're getting our wet paint now, our second coat of paint. Oop, and I'm flinging paint dots on myself. I'm gonna have green freckles later today and a green polka dotted pink t-shirt. But that's the way it goes. <laughs> I have paint clothes and clothes that are soon to be paint clothes. Even if I tell myself, I'm not painting in this outfit. Somehow, I do. So there we go, that part's wet. We're gonna lay this inlay to get the flowers everywhere pull that part away and just rub that down, make good contact. I do have a brayer here, which can help with that. Just making sure the ink or the paint on the inlay makes contact with the wet green paint on the board. I'm going to Paint the other side here. Uh, Polly says she has an amazing wardrobe of paint clothes. Absolutely. You know, paint, paint can uh, make things, everything look a little more fun, right? So wet green paint on this side of the board. We will lay the inlay, making sure I'm getting, there we go. So that guy's on there. I'm gonna take my scissors and yes, who said that? No stress, only joy. I'm going to talk about my husband a little bit here. He's not watching today. He's going ice fishing, which I don't understand for the life of me, why people want to dig a hole or cut a hole in the ice and sit on it all day long. But he's gone ice fishing and he'll be gone for a bit. So let's talk about him. He loves to help me. Well, I don't I won't say he loves to. He agrees to help me. Um, he once told me that he thinks if he had his, he thought if he had his life to live over again, he might like to be a woodworker and do like build furniture and do that kind of thing. Well, then he helps me with projects, just rehabbing some stuff, cutting things, doing whatever. And he says, he hates it. <laughs> he totally does not enjoy woodworking, he says. But it's my view that the reason he, he kind of romanticized it and thought he would love it. But then he does take the joy out of it for himself by insisting that everything be a hundred percent, you know, perpendicular and this way and that. And there's things you have to get exactly right when you're creating something. There are things that have to be right. But there's a lot of stuff that the wing and a prayer approach, 
um, just goes a long way to keeping the process fun and enjoyable. And I'm hoping one day he'll either get there or I don't know, or, or I won't need his help as much because I don't like him to be crabby. Let's hope ice fishing goes well. Most of um, my husband's fishing involves card playing and beer drinking, I think. One time on a fishing trip, he, he bought, brought fish home. Come to find out, he stopped and bought them at a fish shop on the way. <laughs> he fessed up, so. But he didn't want to come home empty-handed yet again. So he, he got some fresh walleye, which is a wonderful local fish. You can see here, I think that I'm piecing. I'm tearing some areas. This is spread out. So I just want to get these so I don't have any totally blank areas. I want paint and lay everywhere. If I wasn't live, I might have planned that a little better, but this is going to be just fine. Just fine. So our things are down in the wet paint. I am now going to take some water. We're going to spritz the whole thing down with water. Oh, I love, I love the green. I love the green that you picked. Jill? No, what you call? I didn't know what I was exactly doing, so. There we go. It's a beautiful the final color. The project was um, the doTERRA. Anyone use doTERRA? The misters work. Perfect. Hey, Lisa, Perfect so good to have you here. Yeah, don't you miss walleye? It's it's the best fish oh, around, We're I think. We're located in Afton, Minnesota. Yes. Um, hey, Royce. So glad that you could join us. Today we are making a sign for um, Jill and I have purchased a property here in Afton that we're going to be using as an Airbnb and creative studio shop space retreat location. We're getting all that set up. And what I'm working on is a sign I think it will say just welcome, but later we can make matching ones that say Afton Schoolhouse Inn and, and that sort of thing. So what we've done, we painted this board in an off-white, then we stamped on it with black using the courier to get like a newsprint effect. And now... Oh, we sealed that up. I think it's important to seal because we're going to distress this green paint back after, after we get it going here. Yes, walleye in Minnesota, but also in Michigan, right? I'm going to turn my dryer on. We're going to dry this because it's on air, but because I'm using a, a true chalk clay-based paint without a sealer in it, I could just let this dry overnight and let it be completely, but we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna dry it up so we can move on. I wanna thank all of you Kathleen is curious how it's going to turn out. Tell you the truth, Kathleen, so am I. <laughs> um, some of the things that um, are the bravest either um, turn out great or we learn a lot from, right? So let's see if this is going to be a lesson or an actual successful project. Either way, I feel good about it. When I learn lessons, that's a certain kind of success, right? Right, Jill? That's right. Yeah, there's a, there's a great song. It's either a lesson or... So here we go. We're going to dry this up.
pretty well and, and check it out. See how it's looking. Whoop, a little more. Thanks, Royce. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I'm hopeful that once we get our space up and running, we'll be able to invite teachers from around the country who are interested in checking out the St. Croix River Valley here um, and staying in our Airbnb and putting on classes for folks. Um, we're, we're in the country here but we're very close to major metropolitan area in the Twin Cities. And there's lots of very populated um, suburbs near us. So Afton for me is the best of everything where it's very small town, very country. You know your neighbors, but people aren't sitting exactly on top of each other. There's space. All right, I think we're gonna get this wet again because that's how you release the paper. We're gonna release this paper and take a look. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what do you think, Jill? Beautiful. It is distressed and that is okay because that's the look I'm going for on this. Um, if you're not so much into the distressed look, you could let that dry. Like I said, you could let it dry completely and you would get a clearer image without as much vintage stress, distressing. But I love that. And I'm going to take advantage of what has happened to demonstrate something else that's cool about these inlays. And that is because they are, you know, actual quality, awesome paint on a carrier sheet. When we put it on a, a base that has no sealer, the paint remains workable, meaning we can spread it around a little bit if we have a little paintbrush. And let's see if I have a little paintbrush. And if I don't, I always have my favorite paintbrush, also known as my finger. I'm going to kind of use a pencil as a paintbrush if I can. <laughs> no, I can't. Whoops, there we go. We missed a piece. Thanks, Jill. So we have some areas where there's lines that I don't especially like. If I had a tiny brush here, I would activate that. See this red paint, we can smear it around because it's still an active paint. I could repair this if I had a tiny little paintbrush and get those red things to join up and not have so much of a distinct line there. So there's that. I'm liking it. What do you guys think? And yes, Linda, there is um, built-in distress. And then depending on how long you leave it on and, and that kind of thing, you, you get more distress. And th there you go. Jill is seeing an area where there, there's a hard edge. And hard edges, I don't know, a lot of times just are not that attractive. So I'm going to follow her lead and smooth some of those out using that active paint, right? To, to just kind of soften that edge a bit so you don't see the line breaking down. Do you see any other not so great? Eh, right here, it's a little bit. See how that flower, if we go in there, it's very um, cut off. So I'm I'm using my finger, a little paintbrush would be better, but softening those edges so it doesn't 
look so much like there. I like that better. It's not perfect, but now it's not perfectly straight either. I'm going to dry this bad boy. What time are we getting to have here? It is 1140. So we're going to have time to distress. I'm going to dry it up before I start distressing more. Because some of you, if you've been watching all along, might be wondering, why did she bother to paint it white and do that stamp underneath there? You can't see any of it anymore. Well, I'm hoping when we distress this back through the inlay and through the green paint, that we'll get back to the typewritten stamping, typewriter stamp. That should stay in place because we used a permanent ink and we sealed it with a clear water-based sealer. When we get to the distressing part, we could use a, a sanding sponge or we can wet distress because, again, it's a clay-based paint, a, a chalk-based paint, chalk and mineral paints that do not have a built-in sealer are easy to distress just with uh, a rag and water. If the paint you use has a, has a sealer in it, you may need to distress it back using a sanding block or sandpaper. But there is always a way, you guys, to get the look that you want. And that's why you need to befriend your local stockist, because whatever products your stockist sells, your stockist can tell you how to get the best effect from those products. I have a wet t-shirt. We're not having a contest though. We're just gonna distress and hopefully back to some of that typewriter stuff. Who was it that said, uh, they were curious to see how this would t turn out. I know I said I was. <laughs> Are we gonna have an on-air success or an on-air lesson? I'm not seeing too much typewriter yet. Let's see. I know there was big stuff up here. And I'm just distressing the edges. I'm, I'm trying to remember where the type was most obvious. Um, when Jane did her project over decoupage tissue, she said she was going for an old wallpaper look. That is kind of what this should look like too. If we get back to that, that stamping. I'm not seeing it though. You've seen it, Jill? <laughs> so this could be, I won't call it a failure because I'm still loving the project, but the lesson might be that um, I have to stamp darker underneath for that part to show up. I'm still liking this. Me, it was Kathleen who said that, yes. Well, Kathleen, we're learning together that I think the technique and the process will work, but we're gonna have to finesse it a little bit to have 100% success. And um, here's what I'll do the next time. I will, I'll use paint underneath to do the stamping. I will paint it with, in the off-white and then I will stamp with black paint and I will seal it more than one time. So I'll put a couple of coats of sealer. You notice that I'm kind of distressing around flowers, but I'm going to do some of them too because we want it to be uniform. And I've just got water on this rag. So there we have that. Oh, 
Oh, I see some of the, there's some of the stamping. Can you zero in on that and see it? It's very subtle, but, but there it is. You can see the lettering. See if I can find places. Do you see it, Jill? <laughs> it's not yeah. my imagination. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but I can see some of the stamp lettering showing up underneath there. This is where I think some of the capital letters were. I may be able to stamp over a, again a bit and get some of that back. So live video, everything, you know, just we, we don't always get what we think we're going to get when we take on a new technique. And honest to Pete, I don't consider that to be a failure. I really do just think that's part of the creative process. We try things. We learn things. I'm still really liking how it looks. And I'm liking the distress. I, I do wish that the lettering showed up better. But it's under there. I can, I can see it. Here's some more, you can see the, I mean, it's a typewriter thing. So the print is, it's not super bold. There it is, it is here and it does have an impact, I think, on the design. What do you think, Jill? Mm -hmm. yeah. Subtle. I like it. Subtle is, subtle is good, right? Mm -hmm. And even if it doesn't read as newspaper under there, it adds a layer of some interest. And I'm liking it. I do see the type. I see the font. I see it looking like, yes, there is something underneath there. So see if we can get a better picture of, is that pretty good? We can see where it's been distressed. It has not been distressed. If it shows up on camera, great. But the, the newsprint is showing up here. I see it. I see it here. And here. It, is it showing or not and so it's much? Not on camera. Well, you're going to have to trust us, you guys. It is showing up. And thanks, Shannon. It does look like vintage wallpaper. And if you were here in person, and I hope one day a lot of you can be, you would see that the text is showing up in a very subtle way. So I like it. I'm gonna distress this other side. I'm gonna call it good and not try to re-stamp it. It's funny, we do all this work and then we grab things and undo it. Um, Belinda, yeah, isn't this a great green? It's, what would you call this? I mean, I, I know what the company calls it, but what would you, how would you describe it? It's kind of a, hmm. it's brighter than olive. It's not an olive green. Pea soup. Uh, I think it's more <laughs> green and less yellow than That's pea true. soup. It's a great green. It's it's got brightness without being gaudy. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a pretty name. I think it's like a Minnesota swamps can be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota swamp green. You know, the moss and the swamps. All know, right. The... That's like my daughter when she was in the seventh grade. It was a brand new school. Lake Junior High School, Lake Middle School, and they were looking for a, they had a naming contest for their school mascot, and she suggested Lake Algae. It was not chosen to be the mascot. Chosen. <laughs> well, you know. But you and my daughter could name things together. There we go. We'll, swampy, we'll own... swampy Minnesota Green. We'll start our own paint line and we'll... <laughs> I actually thought she was, yeah, pine green, basil green, grass green. Those are all 
pretty descriptive of how it, how it looks. Um, swampy is kind of descriptive, but less appealing somehow. All right, there we go. I think that's good. Maybe too much here. Knock some of that back. Boom, boom, boom. You probably don't want to see me watch, rubbing green paint off here all day, but we're going to come on back, try it again. Yeah, I do really, really like the level of distressing. Um, the stamping is very subtle, but it's there. I can see it in this area right here. I can see it in here and in here. So it really is the kind of thing I was going for. I hoped it would be a little more prominent, but it's not bad. Like I said, next time I'll use black, black paint, let it dry, seal it a couple of times, and, and I think we'd get a better show for it. Um, the next thing I plan to do is stencil. IOD doesn't make stencils yet. I don't know if they ever will. So I, um, I have some other. We could, we could write Afton on here. We could write Afton. We could, Afton might be nicer than welcome. What do you think? What do you guys think? Should we go Afton? Should we say welcome? We could say Afton Schoolhouse. Let's find an F. There's an F. Yeah, we'd probably have to use smaller. We could just go Afton, Minnesota, maybe. M-I-N-N, -N, the old-fashioned postal abbreviation. A-F. There's an N. And an O. And a T. Yeah? Afton. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use ink and not. I'm going to use some ink. On a brush, I think on I think a brush. Really yeah, let's get them in the right kind of place. A. Well, I know what we'll do. We'll start with T. Start with T because it's in the middle, right? That's always sort of a good thing to do. Put the top of the stencil there. Does that look centered to you, Joe? Mm -hmm. We are just winging a prayer in it today. This is not a stencil brush. It's just a plain old, old brush. Royce, if you're still watching, I know you've you're familiar with these inexpensive, way better than a chip brush brushes. Okay, let's look. Let's look. That leaked under a bit. Oh, sorry. Again, get the rag. I do like the. Um, contrast between the, the black and the green. Oh, mm -hmm. beautiful. The ink is just gorgeous on there. So I can touch that up later with a little green paint where it leaked out. I will do better now at not letting it seep through. Let's take more off. We'll offload the brush. And I think O can go right here lining up the top edge. So we did stamping, we painted, we stamped, we inlaid, and now we're stenciling on top of that. Mm 
that's when I get the looks I really want is when I combine all the different techniques. That came out better, not quite as leaky there. Let's go with the in right here. Do I have that the right way? Mm -hmm. Or do I? No, you I do. did. Okay. So here we go with that guy. We're still, we still have folks watching. Thank you for staying with us through this. Just kind of offloading more of the ink before I start stamping. Offloading meaning just pouncing it on my palette paper. Get a lot of that off so we don't get the leakage that we got on the tea. Leakage, seepage. Oh yeah, it's looking nice. Then we have the F. I think that's always a good thing to remember is working from the center out. I'm gonna maybe squirt a little more of this ink. Let's see what happens if I brayer it over. Should we try that? Why not? Get some brave, right? Be brave. Oops, it wiggled. Nope, does not work so well. Uh, paint would probably work, but the ink is very uh, watery. I think the, the stencil is high, so it doesn't Yeah, the, the stencil is- a soft brayer, you mean. Like a paint roller. That had soft. Yeah, I think that would probably work better. These stencils are great because they are a bit thicker. So they work real well when you stamp properly and don't. Um, what about here? Mm -hmm. And I think we could do schoolhouse in lowercase. Or we just do Minnesota maybe. We will decide that off camera before we finish this puppy up. And when it's finished, I will distress it a little bit more and the lettering and post a picture on the IOD tribe. Whoever is still watching, hey, Joy from Calgary, Joy Elizabeth, good to have you here. Um, a little bit on there, that's okay. We'll wipe it and think of it as all part of the distress, right? So there's that for now. Um, thanks, Lori. So there we have Afton. We will add, I think, M-I-N-N -N off camera. We will use this at our Airbnb. If you ever are in Afton, Minnesota, I'm going to make me big again to say goodbye. If you're ever in Afton, Minnesota, please come by and see Jill and I. Um, but find your local stockist. If you don't have one, um, somewhere in the comments, Linda D'Antonio. Thank you, Linda. Namaste. Um, Linda provided the the web address, so at ironorchidesigns.com, you can find a local retailer. Um, many of us ship. I ship to anywhere, but you're better off finding someone near you, even if you're going to buy online and ask for shipping because shipping costs are reduced if you go local. If you can have a personal relationship, that is the very, very best because um, we all sell slightly different products and we know our products and how to use them together with the tools IOD gives us. So I'm going to hold this guy up. Um, I think we had success with the stamping. It's not as evident as I kind of wanted, but it's there. Um, we'll keep We'll keep practicing this technique and fine tune it and make it better. Um, I'll post a finished product project, finished version of the project um, in the IOD tribe, which if you don't belong to just Google um, 
or on Facebook search for IOD Creative Tribe. Thank you so much. And you have the best enabler. Yeah, we are kind of enablers and encouragers, but I hope in the in the best possible way. So thanks for joining today and thanks for putting up with our technical difficulties. We love our people. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Mwah. Bye.